Jeff, there are all kinds of people that make up a world. There, there are indeed, and some of them are not so nice, particularly during the holiday season. Yes, but this is the most, the loveliest time of the year, the most joyous. It's filled with joy and peace and good feelings towards our fellow man. We would never do anything wrong or bad or illegal during this joyous season, Jeff. Unless, unless you apparently need some Christmas decorations <laughs> and don't want to go and actually buy them. Oh, so it's so easy. You know, you could go... You could take the time to shop and find just the perfect decorations for your home, or you could happen to see them as you're driving around, just leap out of your car and snag them and throw them in the back of the uh, the SUV. Yeah, I, I just don't. Yeah, is it like, oh, my gosh, I love those decorations. I'll never be able to find them. I'm just taking those. You see, I, Jeff, I, the decorations are already staged for you. Well, what would this look like in front of a home like mine? Oh, I see. It's in the front yard, I, I, I just like near the front door, but not too close to the sidewalk. That's how I would do it, too. Leap out, snag, rump, 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 into the SUV. Dirty deeds, triggered tirades, busybodies, and missing cats. They say tall fences make good neighbors, but bad neighbors make... The Right Next Door Podcast. All kinds of things are being stolen from, I mean, we've got the traditional porch pirates stealing your Christmas gifts. That's kind of old news. But what I'm kind of shocked is that there's been a couple of stories about people stealing these plastic mold decorations. Yeah, they're called blow mold. Uh, they're, 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 They're created by the plastic is in the factory and they blow air into it. And you know what, folks, you know what we're talking about, those glowing Santas and uh, various creatures and Rudolphs and elves and... and Elves and reindeer and light up plastic ones. For example, I saw something. Uh, Hi, neighbors, it says here. Just want you to be aware of Christmas decor thieves. They stole my largest reindeer last year and stole the other two last night. So the thieves... They're keeping track. You know, thieves are very organized people, Jeff. So you're going to write down, oh, where did we steal that reindeer last year? That was really a nice one. Let's see. You know, I'd like to get a few more like that. Let's We'd like to get a matching set. Yes. Let's go back. Let's go back there. I think I wrote down where I thieved from last year because I'm so well organized in my thieving. And uh, we want to get the match set. So that's that's very, very important. Uh, yeah. And it's happening everywhere because there's I, I've seen multiple stories. Uh, the one headline in uh, Pennsylvania here from uh, oh I just lost the town Doug on it uh, Williamsport yeah uh, uh, the headline is holiday blobo decoration thefts on the rise and then there's a quote from the police chief we're currently canvassing the area for cameras that may have caught something wow. so they're actually trying to pursue which i mean good for them i mean if i i, I don't well, how much do these things cost do you have any idea some the of them are pretty large some of them are large some of them are expensive uh some of them are obviously people have erred on the side of cheaper decorations so they don't lose as much in the theft and you can kind of tell which ones those are uh but people have to go to this extra effort you know it's not enough that you get out the ladder and put up your, your Christmas decorations. You have to also put up the, or, or, or just have them on your front yard. You also have to plan to put up the wire fencing around them. It says here, we live on a corner, so my hubby puts up wire fencing around the front. It's a little extra work, but if I can help deter them, meaning the thieves, I'm assuming, then it's worth it. We just put lights around the fencing too, like it always belonged there. So you have your lovely decorative fencing. You have your lights for the fencing, Jeff. Yeah, but is that really going to keep them out a little uh, a little makeshift fence? I don't I mean, unless he's electrified it, I don't know. Wouldn't they just like trample over the fence, grab the elf and run? Jeff, if I'm a decor thief, I want to make sure I want to go the line of least resistance. OK, I could steal that elf from over there, but that's got a fence around it. I'll go right here and get this elf that's just like sitting on the on the front porch that yeah. on the front porch yeah well this one this one article i guess there's a lot of these uh blow molds are are vintage because yeah. uh another town a bunch of 1950s era they were showing an uh, an elf with a, a candy cane and a a toy soldier drummer guy and uh and i like decorations frosty. that are really really beat up they look like they've come through the, the second world war there's a tradition <laughs> of the beat up old blow mold decoration. It's lit up. Uh, Santa's face is kind of eroded and and freakish. Uh, That's the kind of decoration I like. It's vintage. 
I mean, you have to be a twisted soul to be stealing Frosty. Yeah, you know? come on. What kind of black heart? You're getting coal in your stocking, mister. That's for sure. Yeah, and and some poor guy actually posted a sign. And speaking of fencing, he's yeah. got one of those chain link fences you see a lot in the neighborhoods, you know, yeah. around the bungalows. Uh -huh. And the sign says, no more displays, thanks to thieves. Oh. And uh, it's just posted on the fence and it's, and this is not like a handwritten side it looks like he actually went out and had it made and then it's it's attached with wire to the fence presumably so that the thieves won't steal <laughs> that as well well that's the thing that's what christmas is about you either put up your decorations or you want to if your decorations have been stolen you want to make sure that everybody else comes down to the pits of despair along with you. You want to have that sign out 24-7. Christmas is a time of thievering and horror and misery. Uh, don't, don't enjoy your Christmas. My stuff was stolen, so I want you to be as sad and depressed as I am. Look here. In this space, imagine joyous Christmas decorations. Then imagine my children's crying faces when those decorations have been stolen. Remember that for the entire Christmas season. Thieves, stealing, crime, crime, crime. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, it's uh, it's really terrible. I, I don't know. I mean, just the aggravation of that. Yeah. I mean, you know, the 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 monetary loss aside, it, it takes more time to set that stuff up. Like I, I used to light, I have um, a, a, you know, blue spruce on my in, in my corner lot, as yeah. you know, and I stopped lighting it because I had to get out the ladder and the yeah, broom and yeah. get it. I get the whole thing decorated. Yeah. And then varmints, you know, the, the, the varmints come and then they eat the wiring oh. thinking it's like some sort of a food product because it's made. I know the same thing happened with our power lines where yeah. uh, the Comcast or AT&T guys were out for like three days patching the lines. I'm like, what's going on? And he's like squirrels chewed through the lines and. You know, so they're they're making the wires uh, in such a way that they're encased in some recycled material that uh, animals believe is food. Well, this is what you need, Jeff. There's a post here uh, on a, a next door website. These are the kind of decorations you need. You can put lights on these or not, but you want decorations that are old and dangerous so that varmints and thieves could be injured. It says here, we have a few deer in the yard that were passed down to us from grandparents and are in quotes, very well loved. And in parentheses here, it says here, a few sharp rusted metal pieces on each. <laughs> They're not secured, but anyone that takes them will probably need a tetanus shot. Merry Christmas. Oh my goodness. So there, we talked about that with the catalytic converters. They're booby trapped. Yes. You need to booby trap your Christmas decorations. So they're going to injure thieves or small children that, oh, look at the pretty metal deer. Ah, mommy, mommy, I'm bleeding. Oh, I'm, I'm bleeding. It's like, I don't know if you've ever watched those, uh, those, uh, camera thief things on YouTube. And I mean, you talk about uh, karmic payback. What one woman like runs up to a porch, steals the package. Yeah. And yeah. then as she's running, did you see that? And she tripped over something and then literally snapped her ankle in two. Oh. And, and then the guy that's driving the, the wheel man had to get out of the car and come help her oh, back to the car i'm like well that's that's i think what is referred to as a uh, cosmic payback my friend karma karma uh yeah i don't believe in karma but if there were such a thing that would be the the right kind of payback uh and of course there's those and we'll put a link in the show description if you've not seen them already there is a guy that does these glitter bombs for packages so basically he got so tired of people stealing packages, and he's kind of an electronics guy, like an electrical engineer and a very clever guy. And he created, he has a whole YouTube industry for these glitter bomb packages. Yeah, and, I've, I've seen that guy, and he adds like fart smell. Oh, and all, yeah. And every year they get better and better and better. I, yeah, he must be some sort of computer programmer or he whatever. Is, but... He has like multiple video cameras so you can catch the thieves from, from any angle. And these things look like ordinary packages from Amazon or what have you. And then when the thieves steal them, they're timed so that the thieves get them back to their house. They unwrap them, and they explode with glitter, which is impossible to clean out. You just need to move away. If you, glitter explodes in your carpeted home you might as well just move house and try to clean that up and it's also yeah fart smell like like a little sign like a little sound ha 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 you have been caught you are a miscreant 
And this, there's a whole industry this guy has, and these YouTube videos have millions of views. We'll put a link in the show notes. Yeah, he's, I've seen multiple um, installments of that guy. And th what, what was great is when he added the countdown. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. The, the, people, <laughs> the people open the package and then they start hearing Ten, like five, nine, four, yeah, yeah, yeah. three, two. And then they start backing away from the package. What's it going to do? It's, it's going to explode. And then, and then they're looking at it after they're covered in glitter. Their whole place is covered in, and they're looking like, you know, it's almost like a like a Monty Python episode or something where they got their nose at the, the camera, camera shows you know? them looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the fart smell starts and then they, they're like, oh, no. And one guy like grabbed it, ran to the door and threw it out into the garbage. It was the yeah, funniest. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately. Well, it looks like because there's another story where some woman was actually apprehended after stealing not one, not two, not 10, but 60 of these wow. outside decorations. So it looks like there's an aftermarket because she got busted oh. because the guy that bought them uh, from her, I guess, suspected something called the uh, called five O, and then she got uh, she got busted. So there's they're obviously doing it for uh, for aftermarket. Well, maybe a guy like me who likes those eroded vintage looking Christmas decorations, I'd be the guy that would would purchase stolen contraband decorations. And so it's incumbent upon me to do my part to catch these thieves and turn them in. Yep, I would. Uh, I well, you know, I'm. Uh, I'm. I have infrared. I'm. I have the perimeter oh, surrounded. Right. You have so, the uh, uh, infrared. The the uh, the the dark camera sensor. That's right. Yeah. I'm. I'm always. Why? I just. I'm kind of at the point now where I want one of those, like you see in the movies, where yeah. the camera pivots and then oh, actually tracks the person. Yeah. That that's got to freak out the uh, the burglar. But uh, well, did you get I, your decoration on the peak of your uh, front of your house? Did you get up there with a ladder? I did, yes. Thankfully, there was. Uh, I'm still intact in one piece. You lived to tell the tale. Yeah, I got smart this year. This year, I took a giant push broom, uh -huh. and then I have a nail that. Uh, part of the reason I almost did a header is I was like nailing in a ten penny nail as oh, the hook yeah. for the top, uh -huh. and so as I was, you know, leaning back to, to swing the hammer, is when I almost went off the ladder. Oh, no. But that's in place now. So all, uh, what I did is. I got on a little step stool and then hung it with, uh, you know, on the end of a the push broom, which turned out to work oh, out pretty well. Okay. But I only do the lights. Like nobody would come to my house to steal anything because I, I mean, unless you're coming. What to steal exactly some... is your address, Jeff? Uh, what is? So uh, I'm just curious. <laughs> no one would come there to steal that beautiful wreath. But I mean, I mean, just for our listeners, I mean, we won't want to put your address in the show. Right, notes, right, so. right. Yeah, no, that would be a very bad. Now I do have for our listening audience the yeah. 15 best. Christmas inflatables oh, to decorate your yard this year. Wonderful. Uh, number one is the Griswold family RV. These uh -huh. are all those giant uh, blow up thingies. So you're talking about the 15 top Christmas inflatables? Yeah, to do your yard with. These are not the plastic mold ones. These are the ones where you, you know, you, you've seen them. You pass yeah. the house and some of them are as tall as like the, the roof of the house. And you actually have, need electricity to be for the fan that blows the air in to keep them up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah these first became popular, I think, during Halloween because my neighbor always puts up this giant ghost and the kids love it because you know, it, it, it's somehow it's sensor activated. So oh, it's not always up. Oh. So as the kids come to the house to trick or treat, this giant thing oh. pops up out of nowhere, like inflates in like two seconds. It's pretty cool. Huh. But uh, all right. So Grismo family RV, uh, yeah. that's the number one inflatable. Yes. Uh, for a mere $170 available at big box stores everywhere. And these are all family oriented. When you talk about inflatable, there's no adult toys. There's no, no, no. Nothing, no. Nothing these are the all uh, sexy. Okay, just, just. Checking. No, these are all. Uh, these are all. These are all Hallmark Channel wholesome or Disney Channel wholesome. That would be a heck of a thing if you had one of those un, uninflated things and people come by and then it inflates. It is. It's this large. <laughs> let's say a male member or something obscene. Mommy, or a daddy, sexy elf lady. Yes, yeah, you know, sexy elf the... lady with a. Yeah, there's a, a green and green and red elf lady with a little thong. Uh, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. No, no, absolutely not. So number number two is the Santa riding dinosaur. Okay, which okay. is because uh, what kid doesn't love dinosaurs? That's eighty bucks. Then we have uh, the timeless inflatable uh, reindeer Rudolph. Wow, that's only fifteen bucks. Now that's something I See, could. Uh... You know, you're talking about this, only fifteen bucks. 
Why would I even take the time to steal that, Jeff? You know, I need to know if my inflatable, if my Christmas decorations, they've got to have a certain quality to them. Why am I even going to, going to the trouble to steal them? Yeah, I don't even know because some of these, the price swing on some of these, I mean, the, there's a giant, number four is giant gingerbread man. Huh. Uh, and this is reaching the second floor window, and that inflatable is 40 bucks. That's so kind of creepy, that's... a giant gingerbread man. That That's making me think no, of Ghostbusters, no, no. He's, he's, the marshmallow he's... man or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... A little yeah, bit he's... happy, that kind of freakishly happy creature. I don't know. That's scary. And, uh, yeah, he's holding a, a candy cane in one hand and, and waving with the other. Uh... Uh, snowman with, with bunny. Oh, this is... Now, this one's just weird. Snowman, Snowman with bunny, with bunny and dog. So it's that's just, that's just kind of a Jeff, weird. Jeff, you one. want to save money? You want some decorations you can print, put in your front lawn for multiple holidays. So I want something that's a combination Santa Claus, bunny, turkey, and then what? and then a skeleton. <laughs> So I could just put and this. Then skeleton. Yeah, and they're all together. There's one switch. There's one little switch. You put it out there. You turn it on, and you can use it multiple seasons. Uh, now, whether you whether you have to bring it in and then take put it out again or not, you can just leave it up all year long. Well, there are a couple that uh, you know could be interpreted. Yeah. Uh, this one's pretty funny. So there's number ten is a blow up Santa sleeping under a giant mushroom now santa okay. looks wasted because oh, he's sitting boy. he's sitting down his eyes are closed so if we put mushroom i'm still out santa i'm still a claws <laughs> that's right <He's, laughs> santa's santa's on a wild trip just you know uh, just have just a little bit of psilocybin santa kids th you want to you want to you know don't do drugs unless you're unless you're Santa. You need to some something a little bit extra to go around the world and drop off seven billion presents, Jeff. You need a little bit of extra lift, a little bit of extra something, a little extra cheer to keep you moving. Yeah, yeah. There's a giant Santa with a bass guitar wearing sunglasses for our oh, musical yeah. friends. Oh yeah, that's uh, rock and Santa, oh, rock and roll Santa, and then. <laughs> Speaking of rock and roll, there's two blow up gnomes that look like ZZ Top. They have like ZZ Top beards. They got the beards. So you put those on. You know those are to, to go on either side of the Santa. So yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. got to go next to bass guitar Santa. Um, so I don't know. Some of these are, I, I would say, whimsical for the holiday season. There's a cast um, of characters, a new cast of characters. When you and I were coming up, the Santa riding the dinosaur. I I don't remember seeing that when we were children, Jeff. No, that's something. That's definitely something new. Like the, although, the Grinch ones and the Frosties have been around forever. Although dinosaurs predate you and me, so I mean, hard to believe. So, so uh, you know, there were dinosaurs before you and you and I. So uh, maybe uh, and and were, were you into dinosaurs as a kid? Because I knew every dinosaur. I don't know what. Uh, probably was like second grade or whatever. I literally could not. Every library book that had a dinosaur in it was in my house i memorized all of them every kid loves dinosaurs every, every kid, kid loves my, di dinosaurs what, and was, santa. what, and what so, was your favorite dinosaur oh uh, well of course t-rex the big the i was one, uh, yeah. triceratops there was something oh. about the tri you know because it kind of looked like a tank and it was ominous looking yeah, with those three yeah. horns and i was like okay that's uh but i, I would say t-rex number two yeah but yeah. for me triceratops and then but, we uh, learned the t-rex kind of looked different a lot of dinosaurs changed in our lifetime jeff it's it's shocking that like the brontosaurus is now the apatosaurus uh uh what listeners, listeners can correct us on this yeah these when did that happen I now they're going to change all the flintstone episodes well and, the, uh... and jeff dear sweet jeff pluto's no longer a planet so you know the world the cosmos changes jeff things things change <laughs> Is as long as Uranus is still out good there. Morning. Uh, good, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Well, <laughs> it's just horrific that we even have to cover a topic like this during the holidays. But well, most uh, people are good, Jeff. This time of year, most people are good. Decorations are lovely. Uh, the kids are enjoying things. Well, it seems like there's only a few bad apples because the one gal that they busted was responsible for sixty of them. So that's. That's a lot of houses. If you one take person... her out, you take her out of the equation. It's going to be a happier Christmas for everyone. Right, you got you you have a whole neighborhood that has their decorations back. So Aww. it's just one one bad apple spoils the whole bunch.
Thank you, Donny Osmond. And one good apple that found that miscreant that's made Christmas better for us all. That's right. Ho, ho, ho. God bless us, everyone. You have a neighbor who's driving you crazy. Tell us about it. Right Next Door Podcast at gmail.com. The Right Next Door Podcast is an unscripted production of Eversharp Media, which takes a satirical look at local news coverage and social media. The material, views, and opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the talent, guests, or the production company. Celebrity voices impersonated, including this one.